Hello, hello, and welcome to TLT Talks. Uh, yesterday was a very exciting day uh, for Compass. It is now officially a public traded company. If you uh, are interested in being a part of this place, you now have the ability to do so. I'm actually coming to you from beautiful, sunny Florida. Uh, the kids turned five last week, and so we took them to Disney World. I've never been either. It's pretty cool. So, you know, what I love most about Compass, and, and I think that it reflects itself in the Gordon Anders, how is it going, guys? Here we go, let's get Anders on here. But what I love about Compass is that, you know, it's, 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 um, it's really all about helping people find their place in the world. Anders, how goes it, my man? How are you, sir? Good, good. So I was just saying that Compass is now a publicly traded company. And what I love most about it is that it's very clear in its mission to help everybody find their place in the world, whether that is uh, finding their next home, liquidating an investment property, looking for an investment, et cetera, et cetera. And so, uh, Gordon, thank you very much, sir. In Florida, it's hard not to smile, you know. But uh, uh, you know, I thought it would be a real cool idea. We're always giving our advice to sellers, to buyers, to uh, folks about what they should be doing with their real estate. And I just thought it'd be really great to have a seller on that's currently uh, in, in, in the middle of this whole thing. Uh, I'm sorry if it's a little windy out here, guys. Uh, but, but, but essentially, you know, yesterday, uh, just yesterday was a buyer's market. And here we go. Uh, I would easily argue that, you know, the pendulum has swung and that it is currently a seller's market. And I thought it'd be really great as you are currently navigating these interesting times and terrains to jump on with us why don't you introduce yourself tell the folks watching and the you know 100,000 plus people that will get this in their newsletter who you are where you're from what your situation like just tell us about yourself sure yeah so my name is Anders, Ram Anders Ramsey uh, I am in the process of selling a co-op that I've owned in uh, Brooklyn for 20 years and uh, really excited about being able to close this property because you know, when I bought in Click uh, I got really, I'm afraid to even tell people, you know, what I paid for it. <laughs> I, but this, it was a lot less than what I'm selling it for. And, uh, but I also kind of I do is there. I saw that really good from being, I moved there. It wasn't really, it was borderline. It was fantastic. It's a wonderful, uh, wonderful neighborhood. And, uh, really to be able to put on the market, great story, the way everything is Very cool. And I'm not sure if it's me or you, but it sounds like we have a little bit of a connection thing. Is there somewhere else in the in the house you can go? Oh, you you have no. Not, you're now you're good. good. Oh, you know what it is? You have the phone standing on the microphone. And so, like every oh. other word's getting lost. Now it's great. Got, now, gotcha. Now, Sorry about now, that. No, no, you're all better. Good. Yes, much better. Okay, cool, much cool, better. great. Uh, yeah, someone, someone literally just texted me. He should move more, more closer to his microphone. No, now we're great. So, if you could just cool. give us that one more time, just because it like literally every other word is out. So, yeah, sure. Bought the co-op twenty brief, years uh, ago. Yeah, just real brief. Twenty year. Been at, have co-op for owned a co-op in Clifton Hill for twenty years. Bought it. I got a really good price when it was not a great neighborhood. And you know now selling you know when uh, obviously it's a really really fantastic neighborhood, the 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 story of the sale itself is uh, really fantastic. Uh, great work, you know, uh, just working with your team and can't can't wait to share more of the details about that. So, amazing, yeah. amazing. Well, uh, as you as you might know if you watch our show, we do like to have fun uh, on on the show and our lives, etc. So, uh, what is a fun fact about you, sir? So one recent fun fact is uh, I used to work in the same office building as Mariah Carey. So, uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> one of those things, you know. You're, you're, you're on the fifth floor, the she's on the tenth floor, you can still hear her singing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, exactly. So, you know, that was kind of fun. Very kind of a cool. New York thing. So. Very cool. Very cool. Well, so look, here's what I thought we'd talk about. Uh, again, as you're currently navigating uh, this process, um, so I thought I'd ask about, uh, you know, I thought you could, we could share you and I together. Uh, some of the successes, some of what, you know, what's going on, et cetera. Um, so let, let's start with choosing to sell. I mean, you, you, you've owned this place for a long time uh, and you chose to sell now. I'm wondering, you know, what's behind, what was behind the decision to sell now? Sure. So, you know, one of the reasons was I have been thinking about selling for, for a while, but 
kind of the main impetus for me right now is I'm really interested in getting into property investing mm. and obviously to, to invest, you know, have an investment property, you need to have equity. And so I really saw this as an opportunity with where the market is and being able to just leverage the equity that I have in my co-op. And the fact that I've been thinking about selling for a while anyway, so it wasn't right. something that came on. And also, you know, I decided I didn't really want to invest in renovating it because it also because it's a co-op, it's not really conducive to renting it. So it really just made sense to put it on the market, get the equity, and then I can use some of the some of the equity for you know, buying property for myself and some of the equity for buying an investment property. And that's exactly what I'm moving forward with right now. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. And that, and that's spot on, man. We're seeing uh, so you know on, on the Liveback team, we handle all avenues of real estate. We do rentals, we do sales, we do development, we do it all. But what my favorite, you know, my personal favorite is helping people build wealth through this vehicle called real estate. And, yeah. uh, you know, there, there's a lot of misconceptions out there about what to do, you know, how much to put down, et cetera, et cetera. And so this year has been really uh, transformative and educational to a lot of people, especially to investors, because all of a sudden, you know, the realities and dangers of investment came yep. to fruition. Like, what, what, if, what if the tenant just stops paying rent? And so now you've got to be even more uh, educated and selective and thorough about the investment vehicles and then also it gave people a chance to understand like hey look i've got this asset i've got hundreds of thousands of dollars just parked here uh yeah. and the market's real down i mean new york has not been on sale the way it was on sale in the last six months ever i don't know maybe not since like 2009 maybe right yeah um and so it just it, it really got the gears turning and for a lot of folks uh you know we did have the conversation and you know they, they you know we, we did a lot of sell and buys we did a lot of sell split buy primary and then also buy investment. We did a lot of sell, take the equity, buy a whole bunch of investment property and then rent mm -hmm. the primary. So we, we did a whole series of all these things. And I, I, think, I think it's spot on that. I mean, from our first conversation, uh, the second that I knew it was a co-op and the second how much equity you had tied up in this thing, it was like, oh man, yeah. it's a no brainer. It's like, the yeah. stock's done really well. The stock has done really well for you. Now liquidate yeah. it, take advantage and go into the next thing, whether, whether it's exactly. crypto or Compass or Tesla. And go into the next beast, you know? Like, exactly. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. And, and we are in contract. So congratulations. We are not only in contract, but we went to contract pretty quickly. And so as, as you, uh, we must have done an okay job because you did agree to come on and tell the world publicly how, how great how yeah. you did. I think I would say we're way past okay. <laughs> so, uh, I, I put it that way. So, so yeah. So in terms of the story, so in terms of how I ended up going with your team, uh, so, you know, I had, because I've been thinking about selling for a while, I'd had various conversations with different brokers and so forth. And one of the concerns I've had with different brokers would be one is, you know, as, you know, as I'm meeting with them, you know, for example, you know, they'll come and meet with me and then, you know, I'll have follow up questions or whatever, and I want to get some more information. And there, you know, there was a little bit of a lack of follow through. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you know, I you know, have some questions and I wouldn't hear from them for a little while. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'm thinking in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, you know, is this something I, I want to be depending on, I want to be working with, you know, it's, it's, you know, because it's telling me a little bit what our relationship is going to be after I pull the trigger and sign an exclusive. Right. So, so I was, um, I met uh, another broker, uh, Max, Max, who you've had on your show. I met him through this uh, investment property uh, um, 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 uh, journey. Forum. And, and so he introduced me to you guys. And one of the things that was really interesting was, um, so you guys are, are uh, it's a team. It's not just one person. And I was just blown away just from the first introduction of the amount of kind of energy and attention that immediately sort of I was being given and personal attention from a number of different people and sort of follow up and really making sure, you know, did, did you get what you needed? Did we answer your questions? And so forth. So already from the very beginning, I felt confidence. You know, I felt like, okay, this feels right. And what I also realized was there's something really to be said for being able to work with a team. Because a lot of times, if you work with a single broker, even though if that one broker, they may be a rock star broker, but they may not just not have the bandwidth. So you may end up right. finding that right. they may be great, but they're not really available. Um, right. So that's one of the things that really has meant a lot to me is, um, you know, one of the things I, I move forward. And of course, the other part was when I did meet and you guys walked me through kind of your go-to-market uh, strategy, right. that was also obviously, you know, what sold me as well. Awesome. Then obviously, 
put into motion when we actually right. you know, that's put, awesome. Put the that that's game. awesome. Yeah, my question was about to be like, why y'all so were owners? And that was that was really yeah. good. Yeah, and, and, and you know, I say that all the time. So I I started you know the mid nineteen two thousand nine. I got into real estate, well, residential in two thousand six. I did some development before then. And it was like, it doesn't matter how great you are. You just can't be everywhere and do everything. And so, I yep. mean, here we are. Look, I'm, I'm in Florida talking to you from my terrace. But meanwhile, apartments are being shown. Things are going to contract. Applications are coming in for rentals. You just right. can't, you know, the, the new way of real estate is a team. And is every person on that team doing, you know, their highest and best use. And thank you. That, that means a lot because that just, it means that I know as a team, we're heading in the right direction. And that was the reason. Yeah. We were chosen. That's really great. And you know, you worked with Nancy and James on our team, and they're they're just. I mean, I I have a rule that in order to join our team, a you've got to be a good human. Like I don't care how many how many deals you can get done. That's not important right. to me. You got to be a good human. You got to care about people, and B you've got to find some way to add value to the team yep. and to our clients. For um, sure. And you know the people you've got to work with clear clearly uh, embody that. But yeah, it's, you're, you're spot on, man. Anytime. So just as a suggestion for the sellers out there. Uh, you know, when interviewing who you're going to work with, just maybe ask some questions around logistics. How many people are on your team? What is your function? What are other people on the team going to do for me? You know, on our team, we're sort of a company within a company and we have staff, a leadership team where everyone's got their own role. We have our own uh, head of marketing operations. That's for the Liveback team, not for our Compass. We have our own yep. head of rentals. I mean, we have everybody's designated to do their own thing. And so we are able to 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 manage the process quite seamlessly because of this uh, process and so when interviewing a broker you might work with you know, uh, yeah. when interviewing a broker you might work with for those out there just ask about those functions and so look here we are we are we are, we are in fact in contract you know we've had uh, a pretty wonderful experience together what are some of the things that you think uh, got done really well or at a high level or what are some, what are some of the things that you, know, you, you think maybe make us stand out from some of the other teams out there you know, I think one of the things that really stood out for me was this process of let's first kind of test test the market with a really small kind of private group. So it's kind of like we're almost kind of you know, prototyping it a little bit. You know, basically this, we're going to see before we go to this broader market, let's just see what, what, what the market can, can, can hold. Mm -hmm. And let's be a little bit aggressive because it's safe to do that within this okay. smaller group. Uh, even let's go with something a little bit crazy, you know, kind of a crazy price. Right. And what's really interesting here is as it turned out, even during the time where I had begun to have conversations with Nancy and James, and when we actually made the decision, put it on the market, during that time, as we discovered, the market had, had shifted even in that time, um, and it became even hotter. So, so it turned out that even this aggressive price that mm. they were going out with, even that wasn't even aggressive enough, right. which means that it's such a great thing to like yeah. to, to start really high. Let's get kind of shoot the shoot for the moon because what do we have to lose? It's it's a private exclusive. It's like it's not you know right. worst case. It's just very very private. It's not we're not going on the MLS. Right. And it turned out uh, that was just gold. You know, it was gold. Yeah. So yeah. It out really yeah, it was awesome. I, I I had a rough year, right? For for nearly a year, I had to deliver crummy news you know we got to do yeah. our price for rentals we got to add three months for sellers it's not a good for like so long to deliver bad news and when you and i first started talking you know we were we we, we had we had a very conservative conversation we we're like look let's because we have this process uh we can try this thing and then right as as we were prepping because again on our team we, we 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 do a lot about making sure to read the market right we, we have yeah. all kinds of metrics and yada yada and compass is a really great job about putting data in front of us. But the reality is the function of the broker today has changed, right? Like if we were having yep. this conversation five, six years ago, the function of the broker was access, right? Like consumers couldn't access property without a broker. Now yep. with Zillow, with Shreedies, with all these different uh, technologies, uh, Compass Build Collections, which is brilliant. Uh, with all these different technologies, you know, you can get out and you can see property. Of course, we'd have access to, you know, off market property through our network and that's still really valuable. Yep. But the function of the broker today is more is, is has never been more than a consultant, whether it's on the buy side or the sell side. It's you know one of one of my uh, one of my uh, first sales mentors, rest in peace, uh, Greg. He's not with us anymore. He used to have the saying that when you sell anything, property especially, you don't sell the steak, you sell the sizzle. And mm. so understanding how to launch a property where it's got a really great first impression, where people can really see it for what it is, uh, is really important. 
and that if you launch, the, you know, there's only one chance for a first impression. If you launch it incorrectly, you find yourself in this domino effect of price drops and lack of desire, urgency, and yada yada. And so, uh, being able to read the market and the data, and you know, being able to 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 go to a certain subgroup and all those things, uh, j just to, to those watching at a very high level, uh, you know, most brokers when they when you have a, when you have a pricing conversation or a go to market conversation. With most brokers, it's, it's a chat. What do you think it's worth? Cool, you agree on a price. Let's take photos. Let's take, uh, you know, let's take, um, let's take photos. Let's do the floor plan. Let's go to market. And the challenge of that is that all of the risk falls on the seller because if you underpriced it, you probably yeah. leave someone in the table. Even in a bidding war, you probably leave someone in the table. If you overprice it, well, then it doesn't go anywhere. And then you have a price drop and consumers are really intelligent. When they see a price drop, they are like, you know, sharks in the water, so to speak. So finding yep. that in between price is really important. And so we on this team, you know, we have we have a specific system that we built over many years where we have the ability to offer to, you know, a, a subset of people, you know, someone that's really specific in the neighborhood, yada, yada, to feel it out so that we have some data and some feedback prior to going and exposing it to the entire market. And the yep. truth is that people love off-market property more than anything else. So more often than not, when we do expose it to this small subset, sometimes we were able to produce a transaction at a really great price. And in, in the case of, you know, Anders here, we priced it about 20% above the last comp and the last comp was renovated and we weren't. So 20% more and unrenovated and oh, we crazy. still created a bidding war. It was, it was a really great experience. It was a really great experience. It was just like, I mean, it was just so funny, you know, and Nancy, um, you know, we were getting, getting ready to show the property. I was planning on having showing on Sunday. So on Friday, she, she calls me up and she's like, hey, so, you know, I have this one person who's interested, you know, can we make this time? So I'm fine. So then like half hour late, she calls back. She's like, oh, I have somebody else actually who also was interested. Can I find them too? I'm like, okay, fine. Then <laughs> another half hour, she calls me, you know what? I have another person who also wants to see it. Can you do that? So I ended up basically, be, I was out all day. Get out of here, so, go get coffee. <laughs> he's out there. I, was, I, was just, I was just out all day, you know. Um, didn't have a problem with that, you know, but, uh, and then, then, and then by the, by that evening, they're like, well, we have, we have an offer. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and then that, that story was really interesting too, because yeah. so what happened was, um, they said, oh, so they have an offer, uh, you know, so we had the conversation. So, you know, we, we, you know, obviously we didn't accept the offer mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we said, we, you know, because we realized, oh my God, the market's even hotter than yeah. the hotter. I mean, it was just like, yeah. you know, I've gone just, you know, uh, way up there. And uh, so we were, you know, conversation. So we said, they said, well, so how, how much, how much should we kind of push it a little bit? And mm -hmm. I was like, well, you know, 10, 20 grand, whatever, let's just see. And so what the great thing, what ended up happening was James gets back on the phone with this, this other broker and the broker, he didn't even, you know, we thought we were going to be negotiating, whatever. And the broker immediately said, here's my best and final, yeah. which was higher, yeah, like even yeah. higher than the conversation we've been having. He's like, yeah, that's our best and final, take yeah. it or leave it. Yeah. You know? Well, that, that was uh, just, clever. <laughs> yeah. That was, that, yeah, that was awesome. And it was by design. It was, it was by, yeah. you know, James calling and saying, listen, I know uh, if you, if you want us to not list it, we need a magical number. And we kind of gave a couple of innuendos yeah. about the number. Yeah, it was amazing. I mean, honestly, the, the whole yeah. thing was so, I, I, the, through the entire transaction, I like had a smile, yeah. a smile on my face, you know, it just feels yeah. so good to deliver things. Because listen, that's real money that you're going to use for the future. And here's what's really cool. Here's what I love about it more than anything else. And this is sort of, uh, this is what we optimize for on our team. Yeah. Sometimes uh, people could look at a sale, at the seller and the buyer and think that they're, you know, that it's, it's uh, somebody's got to win and somebody's got to lose. And I challenge that concept and say, why can't we create an environment where everybody wins? So in this case, that is true where the seller got, you know, nearly 23% above market value yeah. in a very quick period of time. And the buyer is ecstatic to cut that I know. check. I know. Right? Everybody That's wins. Part two. And everybody it, wins. Right? And everybody wins. I know. I know. Yeah, because yeah, they were so glad that they were able to, because there was nothing else there that they, they, they had targeted this co-op complex. They really loved this co-op. They really wanted a unit in this co-op. They've been looking for a while. Yeah. They, really, they got turned down with another unit that they lost. They didn't want to lose this one again. So they were happy, you know? Yeah. No, it was a great, it was great. I mean, honestly, that, that's what real estate should be. Real estate yeah. should be a collaborative meeting of the minds. It shouldn't be seller and buyer duking it out through the brokers. It should be a collaborative. Right. Look, the seller needs to make money. The buyer wants a good deal. And still, 
there's a way to go about it where everybody wins. And yeah, this is one of those. So, um, oh man, I love talking to Andrew. So any, any, um, any final thoughts? I mean, we've covered, we've covered, you know, how you chose a broker. We've covered a little sure. bit about your experience. Thank you for all these wonderful compliments. It's, it's a really big and important factor for us yeah. that we are under promising, over delivering, making people feel really serviced and seen. And, you know, it's, 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 uh, very early in my career, I had decided that I don't really care how much money I make as much as I care how much we serve people. And ironically, yeah. the more you serve people, the more money you make. So it's like, when you have your priorities straight, you know, it ends up working out for everybody. Yeah. Uh, but sure. uh, any, any final tips for sellers out there sure. that are about to maybe sell or thinking about selling or any, any tips? Yeah. So, so one, you know, one thing is you, you hear people a lot at times, conversations, you know, I'm, I'm on these now co-op lists, mailing lists or whatever, condo mailing lists. And one of the things, you know, people are asking, so is it, is it the right time to sell? You know, should I sell now? You know, whatever, is this the right time? And the way that I look at it is, you know, unless you're, you're for an investor, which is a different story, but if you're selling your personal property, the, the right time to sell when it's right for you and your personal life. Don't kind of try to time it for, oh, the market and all this stuff, because you're going to just drive yourself crazy. Yeah. I mean, yeah. as it happened, you know, in our case, in my case, yeah. it, it, it worked out really well. I, but honestly, it, even if I wouldn't have gotten this great uh, price, I would still have been just as happy because this was about when it was the right time for me that's right. in my life that's right. to sell. So that's the that's something the first thing. The other thing is, you know, we, we talk a lot about kind of staging and you know, you know staging the property and and, and um, doing that. And I think a lot of times people they may end up spending a 10, 20 grand or whatever to, to stage, and that can work too for some people. Mm -hmm. But I think you can also do very very small key touches that have a huge impact. So for example, in my case, for well, the last things I did on the, on the day of the showing, or actually the day before, I went out, I got this really nice potted plant that was that was in bloom, and I put it right on the dining room table. So it's kind of the first thing people see when they walk in, and it just changed the whole kind of like vibe of the space. So I think you can do a lot with just small, nice touches that are kind of just a really nice, um, impact so those are two yeah. things that I yeah have. those are really really I mean for anyone uh, for anyone that's listening those are really valuable tips especially the piece about timing because when you first called me we were still in COVID we were getting ready to launch a listing in like November or December and then by real estate rules those are not all you hold it you hold it and, and look what happened uh, it's, yeah. it's really about the whole picture that's spot on man. it's really about the whole picture What's with the money? What like it's the entire picture? And again, that's really the value of the broker today. People call me all the time, like, do you think it's the right time to sell? I'm like, that doesn't matter. Let's talk about why you're looking to sell. Let's talk about right. the situation. What are you looking to do? What's the outcome? This is the other piece that, that uh, I'm gonna tap tag on to your tips. It's yeah. entirely about what's your outcome? What are you trying yeah. to achieve? And let's reverse engineer that. And if selling is a part of that plan to get to the ultimate outcome, well then we should sell. And sometimes the answer is yes. So, I mean, there's been a myriad of sellers that I've convinced not to sell because you start to ask them the questions. You're like, well, for what you're trying to do, you don't need to sell. Instead, pull right. out equity and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, there's a myriad of conversations Absolutely. like that. Yeah. But it's about identifying your outcome and reverse engineering. And yeah, presentation is everything. Buyers yeah. make up their mind in the first two to three seconds when walking into a space. And so, you know, the other sellers are like, oh, is the agent really worth it? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, yes it is. 100%. And it doesn't have to be a full on $20,000 staging, it can be, yeah. well, look, if everyone's got, everyone's got uh, their budget. And so if it can't be a full on staging, fine, great. Then let's just do the things we can do. Let's work on the areas. And in your case, again, same thing. When you walk in that, that one thing you did with that planter, when you walk in immediately, it's such a good, warm feeling. Yeah. And you know, I joke around with this all the time with my team, sequence matters, right? So getting dressed and leaving the house is very different than leaving the house and getting dressed. Those are going to have wildly different outcomes. Yeah. And when somebody comes into a property and sequentially what happens first is a good yeah. feeling, and then they see the property, that's very different than if what happens is they walk in and see the property, and then somewhere later, there's a nice staging. So what you did, I thought, was, was really solid. Anders, what a pleasure. What, what yeah. an absolute pleasure to work with you, to know you, to uh, deliver this beautiful outcome for you. Um, thank you for spending some time with us and for your, for your kind words. Thanks for having me. It was, this is great. Yeah, awesome. Awesome. Well, my friend, have a great day. To everybody watching, any questions, feel free to reach out to us. If anyone has any questions for Anders, 
uh, please hit me up on Instagram or email or wherever. Uh, and I will ask him, I will not bombard you with all of our, <laughs> all of our viewers, but I will ask you uh, through our folks. So everyone have a great day. If you're in New York, I hope it's warm-ish. I'm going to go enjoy some of this day. And it's a pleasure, my man. All right. Thank you so much. This was great. Thank B you. Bye-bye, guys.